Hey everybody, I'm uh, just trying to figure out this new stream software real quick. So as soon as I figure out how to do this one thing, we'll get started. So hang with me. Ah, there we go. Cool. Awesome. Ugh. Sorry about that weird start. OBS was being a real bitch today, so I had to install the uh, Streamlabs version of OBS and get it entirely set up from scratch because any time that it tried to call the um, OBS file source to import all of my scenes and everything, it would crash the computer again because OBS is being like a real bitch for no reason, so sorry about that. So everything should be as it was um, with uh, one minor new addition being this cool little um, thing right here, which is just a uh, like a notification log. So anytime somebody follows, subs, donates, whatever, it'll, um, it'll kind of cycle through that. So that way it'll stay up there for a little bit longer. So we'll see if, if that's uh, even worth having up there. And if not, we can always just do away with it. Um, let me know how the sound is coming through in the chat because like I said this is like a totally new software so I want to make sure that the audio and the music is to the correct levels before we get into any uh, tutorial information for today. Okay, so it looks like bot is going. Um, can I get a confirmation from somebody in the chat on how the uh, the audio sounds real quick? Sure that the uh, the mic and the music is coming in. Big Rosser, what's up? Sounds fine. Music's good. Voice is good. All right. I guess if if people come in and start complaining about it, we can we can dick with it. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that uh, where is the bot? Toggle off song requests. Because today we are doing kind of a tutorial, um, so I'm using the rights free music today instead of song request time. Uh, just because for this tutorial, I do want to be able to take this stream and put it up on the YouTube channel without it getting flagged. Um, so we're not gonna have song requests today. Uh, tomorrow, when we, when we start doing more like rudimentary painting stuff that's not really about the tutorial, then we'll go back to uh, having song requests so that it'll be more of a chill stream. But um, like I said, I do want to be able to upload this to, to YouTube, so it's just going to have kind of a little rights free jams we got going right now. Cool, so let's get right into it. Um, just like the title says, we're gonna be painting the brand new uh, Trajan Valoris, 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 however you wanna say it. Um, Custodes named character that came out today. So we've got him in a number of different sub assemblies because believe it or not, this guy's actually a pretty complicated model. Um, so there's his head, and then we've got the uh, main body and legs with his cool little tilting shield and these big old feathers. Um, he's got a lion pelt over one shoulder, so we have the lion pelt separated. 
And then we've got his two arms, which are part of the shoulder pads. And since the shoulder pads have his cape hanging off of them, I wanted to go ahead and integrate those onto the big cape piece and try to do away with any like really big mold lines. Um, so you can see if we use some plastic glue and some liquid green stuff to try to cover those up. Um, for whatever reason, just the way that they did it, it's it's just probably never going to be entirely seamless unless I went ahead and puttied over it and then tried to re-sculpt those uh, fold lines. So I think once we get some uh, paint on there and like a good base coat, um, most of that's going to go away and you're probably not going to notice it. But yeah, it's pretty much, if you're going to get this model, that's pretty much what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go in and um, hit it with some plastic glue to bond these little areas right through here and right through here where you can kind of see and then uh, smooth those areas out with some uh, uh, putty or um, uh, liquid green stuff like I had to do here uh, and then we've got his big old gun axe super cool it's one of the new weapons that custodians can use it's like the um, the gun spear but it's an axe uh, forget what the actual name for it is called but if we want to have like a, a, a time in the middle of the stream where we go over the codex I do have the codex like right here on hand so we can definitely uh, open that up and delve into it a little bit for anybody that has any questions and we've got a really cool base so I know it's hard to see because it's a white resin but this is our base that we're gonna be using for him uh, it actually works out perfectly because it has this little step in it and the way the model is sculpted is it comes with this little plastic piece that's like a like a flagstone or something that he's like kind of got one foot up on. So putting him on a flat base doesn't really work very well. So I pulled this one out. This is one of the uh, secret weapon. No, this is a uh, cyborg miniatures base. It's one of the extras that I had left over from doing the uh, Deathwing. Um, so it's got some cool like concentric ring uh, rock kind of stuff. It's got uh, some like in gothic ruins on it and this cool thing that I think at one point was supposed to be a clock because it's got one and then 12 uh, right there in that ring. You can kind of see them there. So I think it was supposed to be some kind of clock that fell down. Uh, some really cool ruins. Uh, and he sits right on there because when we pin him, so this foot will be here and the other foot will be down here and he'll sit on it perfectly flat because it's got a, a little step in it. Kalini, what's up? All right, cool. So um, let's go ahead and get right to it. We're going to be doing a whole lot of airbrushing today um, because I am going to do this guy in gold. Uh, the custodians have a number of different paint schemes um, in the book, and you can literally paint them however you want uh, because it's a 40K. But uh, we're going to do him in his uh, you know, regular custodies gold, but... Like the title says on the stream, we're going to be doing non-metal metallic gold. And if you don't know what that is, non-metal metallic, or NMM for short, is where you paint a surface with different color uh, flat paints to give the illusion that it's uh, a shiny metal surface without actually using metallic paints. Um, so we're actually... In, in all honesty, like we are going to be doing non-metallic gold, but we're also going to end up doing like non-metallic steel um, because when you do non-metallic uh, paint jobs on something, you don't want to have metallic paint and non-metallic paint on the model because it ends up looking bad. It looks, it looks weird. Uh, so on the, the, the one little bit that's going to end up being uh, steel, so the, the parts of his gun, you can see the barrel and the magazine, um, those are going to end up being like a non-metallic steel. So we'll be doing those by hand as well to try to match the uh, non-metallic gold on the uh, uh, the main armor that he's got going on. Um, and I'm going to do something a little different just because to me, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of red and gold. Uh, just like if I was going to choose, I would always do uh, blue and gold. Uh, I just think those two colors look better together. So instead of having his uh, little robes, because he's got this kind of like tabard robe going on here and this big old giant cape, um, I think we're gonna do is uh, blue and, and gold. So blue armor and gold cloth. And um, just to make it a little, a little nicer, even more so, we're, we're gonna do a uh, two-sided cape. 
So on the outside here, it's gonna be uh, like a really nice royal blue workup. And then on the inside, we're gonna do white. Um, so we'll be, I'll be showing you guys how to do that. And then we're also, to keep in with the color composition, instead of just doing a normal old uh, like tan and brown lion, we're gonna be doing a white lion, like an albino lion uh, for, for his, uh, his little pelt that he's got on his shoulder. So that'll look really nice. And then if for like little, like an accent, we can do these, these big old feathers, we can do those in red and we can do the eagle on his golden shield. We can paint that in red. Uh, but other than that, I don't really want red to show up on the model because um, we're using it as an accent color only. Bobcat, what's up? Yeah, so let's um, get everything set up. Pull the uh, airbrush out of the simple green where it's been soaking. Spray that out. First, we're gonna be doing a couple of different things. We're just gonna we're gonna do a prime, and that is actually the first step of this non-metallic gold recipe that um, I adapted. So I didn't I didn't come up with these three colors and the airbrush method to uh, do this workup, but I did adapt it. Um, to work for infantry models because the the person who came up with it was doing it for vehicle stuff um and i said you know that's really cool and i hate painting non-metallic gold by hand and i'm pretty good at airbrushing so how can i how can i take that and apply it to uh painting like infantry sized dudes um and so about a year ago uh, well, a little less than a year, because it was uh, it was a couple of months after I started streaming, so maybe May of last year. Um, we did a squad of custodies in that non-metallic gold, and since I haven't done it in so long, and many people might have missed it or uh, not known about it, and that was before I had a YouTube channel um, where we could post up all of our videos to, the footage of me doing that has been lost, so we're going to reshoot it today uh, while we're streaming and then after that stream we'll, we'll take that stream and put it right up into the YouTube so it'll stay there in perpetuity and that way um, if anybody asks oh how did you do that I can just send them over there so normally when I paint stuff um, I always do a pre-shade which is you prime in a really dark color so like black like we're doing now and then you take a really light gray or a white and you kind of dust that paint over the model to create a um, appreciate to show where your lighting source is, to show where all your highlights are going to be. Um, and then you can paint really thin over that and use it as a guide for where all of your highlights need to go. Well, for this method, we're using with this non-metallic gold. Um, we actually need to be painting directly over the black paint because um, we need that pure black in places to show uh, the darkest part of our shine. Um, and then we're going to work up using a medium brown, a really striking yellow, and uh, then an off-white with the airbrush to create our gold workup. And then when we get into the hand painting phase, um, we're gonna be doing some edge highlighting with a, let's see, is that a fiber or is that the plastic? Oh, that's the plastic, okay. Uh, we're gonna be doing some edge highlighting with uh, some pure white to really bring home that uh, shine effect that we're gonna be kind of faking with our values of color. And I'll make sure to uh, show you the label of the paints that I'm using and say their names very clearly. So if you guys wanna pick it up, you can go get those paints for yourselves and try it out. So when we get to each step, I'll make sure that everybody knows what paint we're gonna be using. 
Do I play well? I used to. I played a long time ago, but I haven't played in a very long time. Um, I was never really big into it. Uh, I guess, like, I just wasn't at a point where I was going to be really into doing MMO stuff until much later in my life. So, uh, when everybody was into it in the early 2000s, I wasn't, I wasn't into MMOs, and I didn't have a, I didn't have a computer to do it as well. Uh, when I was in college, we played for a little while. Uh, I believe that was during uh, Burning Crusade, and then we uh, were super excited to stand in line at midnight to go pick up uh, Wrath of the Lich King. And we played uh, Wrath of the Witch King for a couple of months. And then kind of after that was when I lost interest in, uh, when, in playing. And I don't think I ever went back. And uh, like, cause as far as MMOs go, I've only ever played three for more than, you know, like a trial run. Um, WoW being one of them. Um, then uh, in about 2011, I want to say, yeah, 2011, I played Star Wars The Old Republic for a long time, uh, about a year. Uh, I played that game all the way through on multiple characters because that game was really cool in that the single player aspect of the game was very, very fleshed out and was different for every single class uh, or, or whatever. It was different for different for Republic and it was different for the the uh, Sith Empire and then the story was also different between each class where's my shitty expression I need to clean the tip off um, so I played through that on a number of different classes um, and then the people that I played with regularly um, ended up moving on and stopped playing and then with me, like if I don't have people to play with like all the time, uh, I lose interest in MMOs very quickly. And then uh, after that, uh, I think uh, 2012 time, uh, maybe 2013, um, I started playing uh, Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, which my uh, now, who, who is my roommate, she um, told me about it because she was playing it. And I ended up getting into it and we played that for years. I only, I only just kind of like put the game down um, last, late last year. Um, and I don't really see myself going back until they come out with another uh, big update. Lord Wedge, what's up? Let's see, okay, I think I got him pretty good and primed. I don't see any plastic showing. Is the camera picking up any? I don't think so. Okay, cool. This is uh, Steinal Res Primer. If y'all didn't know what primer I use, I know some of y'all are new, but it's uh, S T Y N Y L R E Z. It's made by the Badger Airbrush Co. Amazing, amazing primer to put through the airbrush. And they make multiple different types of colors. Um, I think six, six or eight of them in total, as far as the colors go for the primers. Really, really great stuff. Puts down a really nice silky black primer on stuff. It's 
Is there like air turned way down or something? Yeah, it was. I wonder who's going so slow. Now, I haven't used all of the colors, but I have used some of them. I use black, white, and gray quite regularly. And I recently got their kind of medium red-brown um, primer for priming the uh, Deathwing. As uh, the medium brown was the base for the bone color armor workup that we did on them. That stuff worked great. Loved it. pieces one more time with a quick coat just for good measure Check that link here in a second. Barbarians. Yeah, those are solid, man. The finished, uh, the finished one you showed me—that's that's really solid tabletop quality right there. Just uh, get some nice like secondary highlights, and that's gonna be pimping. All right, so we got our primer down. Now we're gonna move into the second stage. And for that, we're not even gonna to touch our uh, lion pelt or our head. So I'm just gonna move those off to the side um, and get uh, get this stuff ready to go. Um, so like I said, it consists of a uh, medium brown, a vivid yellow, an off-white, and then a very pure white in the edge highlighting phase. So those three colors are gonna be uh, Beastie Brown from Game Air. I know that's got black primer on it, but you can see it's very medium brown. It's going to be our uh, our first highlight layer for the golds. Then we're going to switch up to um, uh, flash kits yellow. If you don't have flash kits, you can also use moon yellow from Game Air. They're uh, pretty much exactly the same color. Um, I'm going to use flash kits because um, this yellow is so very translucent that it's it's really hard to um, airbrush with. So just for this project to make my life easier, I'm just gonna end up using flash kits. Um, and then we're gonna go up to ivory, um, which is a very, very bright off-white. Um, and then uh, for the pure white, oh, I got a little bag of paint over here. I recently bought some paints from Jason over at Slow Fuse, along with some of his uh, paint organizers, because I sorely need some paint organization. Um, uh, let's see, Colgate. 
I might actually want to try golden yellow on this one, but we'll see what happens when we get there. So I just got uh, neutral gray, somber gray, just for some uh, black armor workups, um, dwarf skin. So we might try that on this guy as well as the base for our skin, just some orange. So I don't have a very good airbrushy orange. Um, and then orange rust as kind of a rusty orange. And then I got his uh, patented, patent pending, I guess, uh, hobo white, which is a mix of a couple of different paints and a medium to make a really, really nice pure white paint. And I know it is like radioactive white on the on the lights, but there you go, slow fuse gaming, pure white. I'm gonna be using that on this project as well. Um, let's see. I'm gonna put some of this golden yellow out on the palette just because I want to see what it looks like. Um, and then let's compare it to some flash kit. Put them on the other palette next to each other. So the flash kit is definitely more vibrant. Um, but what I could do is just mix some of this golden yellow with some of our moon yellow as kind of a binder. Okay, yeah, so that's what we'll do. All right, cool, but first, first things first, Beastie Brown, We're gonna be working on Beastie Brown. Let's get your Beastie Brown. Gonna get that in the airbrush cup there. Get out our flow improver, put a couple of drops in there just to help it not speckle because we want our golds to be super, super smooth. We airbrush them on there. And um, one thing you want to be able to do with this workup is you want to be able to have your air turned down a little bit because we're going to be pretty close to the model. And uh, we want a lot of control over our, our paint flow onto the model. I'm just going to turn my air down a little bit. Make sure we're not speckling or anything. I'm actually going to add some more flow improver. Really good way to know if your paint is speckling or not is to give it some test sprays and a really bright white surface. So like having a couple of pieces of white printer paper around. It's never a bad idea. I'm just using my palette over here because it's going to get covered with paint anyways. on the arms here so we're just gonna start bringing in our brown and kind of doing start to kind of put this color in there where we <clears throat> where we want our gold to start and uh, the trick to this is that you actually do want some pure black showing through in spaces so you can see I'm doing this corner uh, up here to that point and we're gonna go down here to this point I'm also gonna get these wings a little bit but you want your brown to be pretty solid and you want some of your pure black showing through you can see those two spaces right there where it's still kind of showing through and then we'll just um, uh, do the opposite on the other side. So you can see we have a, a gap here and then a gap on the other side. So one, two, three points. Well, for the inside, we're just going to go, we're going to put brown in the areas where it's not on the other side. So then we've got three points of that black showing through. And since this paint's going to be fairly transparent, I'm just going to do a coat, let it dry, and then come back and do another coat like that. And we'll come down to the gauntlet. And we'll get some on this lion. That paint 
dry. Hit it one more time. And then we'll just kind of stretch it up to that point. Stretch it down to the tip right there so we have some of our black still showing through. And then our gloves are uh, leather, so we won't do those. Let's get a little bit on this armor plate right here. Start to shine right there, and we'll do the same thing over on this side. Come over to this shoulder and it's going to be a little different because it's at a different angle let's get right here And uh, I'm not gonna mess with that sword right now. So I think that's all of the gold armor we're gonna do. So we gotta get this little. That little thing. Okay. So that's our first thing, it's the brown over the black right there. Move on to our main body, and for this one, we're just going to start creating shine. Where it would kind of naturally occur on the model. And you want to make sure that you're being real patient because this paint's going to go on pretty translucent. So you got to do a little bit, let it dry, do a little bit more, let it dry, so on and so forth.
foot over here. Let that dry up. Give it some air, help it out. Center section. on the tips of these little uh, things down here. Oh, hey, GP, what's up? Yeah, this is uh, Beastie Brown. Game Air Beastie Brown with some flow improver. We're doing the uh, first step on our non-metallic gold stuff. Sorry if I'm being quiet. I'm having to focus quite a bit because this paint is a little thinner than what I would want it to be, so it's kind of... Gotta be very careful while I'm spraying that it doesn't get too much moisture in there and, and start to kind of pool from the air.
Okay, I'm happy with that. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit this back area one more time. Some of this you're not going to see once the model isn't fin is finished, but this is purely just so that I can make mental notes of where I, I need to be keeping my my highlights. Okay, I'm gonna get these little spikes for one more time, and then we're gonna move on. Okay. So now you can see we've got the uh, the arms and the shoulders with our Beastie Brown. We've got the main body with our Beastie Brown. And now we're going to go over to the axe. And since the axe, you got to remember where these things are facing when you assemble it. So our axe is basically going to be pointed straight up and down like that. So I need to be able to do all of our gold stuff making sure that all my light source is coming down like this. So I'm just gonna hold it kind of like this.
pretty happy with how that came out. Thy Cyclone, what's up, man? All right, cool. So BC Brown is done, so we can move on to our next color. So we'll rinse this one out. And I think we might need to take a second, just a second, to let the compressor chill out a little bit. Just a minute, because this airbrushing is pretty intensive. So, let's see, what we've got, and he's just gonna assemble just like that. So, we've got our first part of our gold value put in, which is this like medium brown. And then he's gonna be holding up his uh, his axe like that. So, that compressor cool down just a little bit and then we're going to come back and um, check this one more time it is no it's this is pretty much flash gets yellow once it gets good and mixed up so yeah we'll just use this model color that'll be a lot easier to use so we're just going to use golden yellow from model color as our next color and then with each each color so like starting with this one and then going to our off-white we're just going to tighten it in and tighten it in and tighten it in so they're putting less and less color on the model and we have more control over where the shine is going towards and coming from um, so we'll put on a little bit of yellow and then we'll come back and we'll just kind of like spot highlight with our ivory and that's gonna help us lock in that shine and then when that's done you put in a wash and we're going to be doing kind of a pin wash on this guy because I want his armor to be super nice and clean um, and then the uh, the armor workup will be pretty much done until we get into the edge highlight phase <laughs> yeah those magnets always prone to mishaps I'm gonna have to be doing that myself um, for our board uh, display board for Adepticon. I'm gonna have to be magnetizing all my custodian jet bikes. But luckily, I've got a shit ton of uh, magnets laying around. So I got those. Um, I think I got another set in here too. So there's not the only the only bag that I have. I think those are the only ones I have. But these this number of different sizes. So I'm sure that um, I'll be able to stick those suckers on there somehow with all these. I actually got these for free, which was really cool. Um, I bought these little mecha, these resin mecha models, and they took so long that the guy felt bad. So he was like, hey, I'm just gonna give you like all these extra weapon options and a shit ton of magnets just because it took me forever to cast these. So you can see here's some of the little um, gun bits that go onto the side. They're all set up to be magnetized. So I just got like a bag of, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 magnets for free. It's pretty cool. I have, I literally have no idea what size these are. I gotta, uh, but there's like, um, so I think all these smaller ones are uniform. So it's two different sizes. So they're all like this size. And then I've got some slightly larger ones that are that size, but I have no idea what size they actually are. Speedy, show your Warhammer collection. Um, I actually don't have all my Warhammer collection um, readily accessible. I have some models up here on the shelf I can show you while we're waiting. Um, so, um, that's not, well. So, uh, a couple weeks ago we painted this guy. This is the uh, gray daimyo from a game called Eden. We painted on stream, really cool robo samurai dude with some, uh, with samurai banners and stuff on there. Um, got uh, 
this demon from uh, Relic Knights that we painted on on stream. Some cool uh, cartoon, cartoony style paint. Let's see, we've got a. Uh, oops. We've got a uh, typhus that we painted on stream. Still needs a base. But we uh, we painted we painted this guy on stream. Um, we've got uh, this little uh, Arbites officer that we painted like Judge Dredd, so you can use him for uh, like Necromunda and stuff. We painted him on stream. Um, got some Deathwing. So we've got a uh, Deathwing Terminator Sergeant. A nice lion themed base and uh, Deathwing Librarian on an equally nice base. This Deathwing Librarian. Um, I've got a uh, custom converted Mephiston that I made out of a Primaris Marine and the old Mephiston kit. We painted him on stream as well. And uh, we've got this, uh, this is a uh, true scale Terminator from Captain Calico Miniatures. That's my uh, Belial, the Belial leader of the Deathwing that we painted a, a while back. The cool um, Deathwing banner and uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, as far as 40k stuff, I think the only other 40k Thing that I have out here is um, a uh, size of the Emperor Marine that I painted a, like six, eight months ago as like a little test model because um, I like size of the Emperor. So we painted him on there a long time ago, but he's pretty nice looking. So he's on the shelf. Um, pretty much all the rest of my stuff is in, is in cases because I use it to play. Yeah, those might be a little too small. Oh, uh, the magnets. Um, you can use them for all sorts of stuff in 40k. Um, you can uh, you can set them into uh, your base, and then have a tray with some like sheet metal on it, and you can magnetize all your guys so they sit on the tray and carry the tray around. And that way, you don't have to worry about your guys like falling over or falling off your tray. Um, a lot of people use them to have different uh, weapon options. So, uh, like for example on our like marine guy here. Say if this guy was like a like a stern guard veteran or like a hero or something, you could place a magnet in his wrist and then you could um, have a bunch of different guns, each with magnets in the hands. So you could just like pop them off and be like, oh, well today I want to run this guy with like a like a melt -a gun and you can just like pop a melt -a gun on there. Or, oh, I want to give him like a power ax. You can put a power ax on there with a magnet. I don't, I don't really use them. I, I like if I'm gonna build a model, like I think about how I want it to be, um, as far as like kit and everything, and then I just, I just glue it together. And if I need another option, then I'll just get another model. But I do like um, magnetizing my bases every once in a while for, um, for uh, special displays. Yeah. Um, I have uh, different ways. Like I have a couple of hard cases with foam in them. Like I have a battle foam case. I have a couple of Citadel cases just with foam, and they have like little cutouts in the foam to place the minis in, and those work great. Um, there's a company called Table War that makes cases, um, and they are designed with shelves in them. And then the shelves ha are made of uh, it's like a plastic frame with a sheet metal uh, top and you're meant to magnetize your models so they can sit on that frame. Then you just slide the shelves into the case and close it up and it'll hold them It'll hold them safe. You don't have to worry about them uh, getting squished by foam or anything. Um, but yeah, for the most part when I travel, I just use foam cases, like foam hard cases. Those, those tend to work for me and they're a little cheaper and I don't always, like I said, I don't always magnetize my stuff. I only do it if I am, um, if I'm going to be doing like some kind of board, like tournament tray or something. Let's see. 
actually pretty warm. Mm. Need to get a new compressor. It's a tournament tray. Um, it's just like a little tray that you put your minis on and you carry you. Um, cause like at tournaments, um, usually tables are so, uh, close together and you need to like pick your stuff up and move it between whichever table you're going to be on for the next game. Uh, people have little trays, uh, either you either magnetize them to the tray or they have little divots cut in them for the base sizes and you place all your models on there and you just kind of carry the tray around instead of having to, um, have bulky cases everywhere and like have to put your guys back in the cases and then carry the case back to the next table um and it's a way to kind of display your army as well uh there's a bunch of people that sell them like usually they'll sell them as like little mdf uh like laser cut mdf trays that you can um slot the models into um or like i said for like table war where all those are magnetized you can use those Dioramas? No, dioramas aren't really my thing. Um, probably the closest thing that I ever get to do in dioramas is uh, the basing on the minis. Um, since most of the minis that I have, uh, I actually use to play 40k. Um, I usually just keep them in cases so that if I'm like, oh, well, today I feel like playing uh, Space Sharks. I'll just grab the Space Sharks case and go down to the shop. Um, and then, like, this, usually the stuff that I have up on the shelf is either um, like stream projects or like work in progress stuff that I have stored up there out of the way. The only diorama I've ever done was the uh, was the uh, Forge World Abaddon versus Loki, and um, that's already like pre sculpted and everything, so I didn't have to really do much except paint it. We should be able to carry on now. So now we're going to go to Golden Yellow from Model Color as our little vibrant yellow. And we're going to get some Flow Improver and stir this up. Good. Make sure we're not having any speckling going on. Okay. So now we'll start. And like I said, we're going to be going tighter with each one of these, so I'm going to be trying to get in real close. Make sure you guys can see this.
actually. Our second one. See, it looks a little, a little washed out on camera. We need to adjust our uh, adjust our video just a little bit. White balance might be off. Push it. Over. See, it looks a little better. Are working on this guy.
Aragor, thanks for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Liking where that's at. We're starting to it's starting to kind of look like gold. Where before it was just like some brown splotches over back black paint, but now it's starting to look like some gold. And that's what we're going for. Ah, no worries there. So now we're gonna start working on the axe again.
angle on there. Looking good. Got a nice kind of shiny thing going on with the rest of the pole area, I guess. What do you call it? The haft, haft of an axe. Good. I really like this new yellow. Let's see. I'm actually going to hit some spots over here again just because the yellow isn't as vibrant on these pieces as it is on the others. It matches a bit better now. It's really, really popping out now, which is what I want. Cool. So let those sit. And then we're going to clean this out and go to our. Oh, wait, no. Just missed a spot on this axe. We're gonna rinse this color out, and then we're gonna go up to our off-white. So now we're going to go up to um, Ivory for model color. Really, really bright off-white. Sahariel, what's up? And I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of drops this slow fuse gaming white into there as well. Flow improver. Mix this up real good. test sprays because when we start getting into white really want to make sure that you're not speckling anywhere because that could undo a lot of work All right. Gabriel paints with that host thanks buddy appreciate that so now we're just gonna come in here we're just gonna like spot areas like kind of just get in being really careful
that. To really lock in that shine. like that. Okay, that section is done. Shake the hand out. Cyber Steve, what's up, man? This is super tight airbrush and is rough on the hands. And last little bit to go. That's our axe.
that's that. So we can wash this color out because now we are ready to get a gloss coat from this guy and he'll be ready for a wash. That's um, up to this point right now is the extent of the airbrush section for the armor. Uh, it's just um, three steps, basically. If, uh, if anybody came in and they kind of missed it, um, it's uh, four colors in total, one of which being black primer. So we went, started with Beastie Brown, then went up to Golden Yellow, then to Ivory. That's that's basically all you have to airbrush on it. So our gold is like set in there. Um, and the only thing to really lock it in, last little bit, is to do some edge highlighting. But um, I like to hold off edge highlighting until the very last bit. So what we're gonna do right now is give this guy a gloss coat and then put a wash on it to redefine all the details in our armor. Okay, cool. Cleaned up there. Um, okay. And Glusko, where did you go? Glass coat, that's a mat. Glass uh, varnish, here we go. Airbrush thinner. Hey, entire Mac, what's up, man? California was, uh, well, California was California, but the tournament was great. So what we're doing now is hitting the model parts with a uh, gloss varnish. And what that's gonna do for us is it's gonna lower the surface tension on the model so that when we put a wash on it, the wash will not want to settle on big flat areas. It'll only wanna sit into the recess detail. And we're actually gonna use a gloss wash from Citadel as well so that it's even cleaner. We want this guy's armor to be as shiny as possible. Without dirt and smudges. this out, put the airbrush back in the simple green, and I think that's all we're going to be able to do today because our air compressor is not happy with this.
Oh, you're gonna be trying to win it? Better come out guns blazing, because a number of other people are wanting to get their hands on this bad boy, too. Yeah. If y'all didn't know, this uh, this model, when we get it all finished and painted up, he's gonna be a top donator giveaway next Saturday. So that'll be Saturday the 3rd. Oh, the white metal guys, they do good work too. The water. How are you getting yours painted? Mm-hmm. Top donator giveaway. So we wait for that to set up and we'll go ahead and let's paint some uh, fur base, base coat this at least because I do want to highlight this with an airbrush but we can get a get the uh, base coat on this lion belt. And for that I'm going to want some Celestro Grey. I was gonna let them do what they do. Not a bad idea. That's cool. Welcome back, Speedy. Couple of really thin coats of the Celestial Grey on here. Just get it based out. And then, probably tomorrow, when we start doing some more airbrushing, we'll uh, airbrush the highlight in this fur. But, I'd rather stay busy while we're waiting for that gloss varnish to fully set up before we uh, put any wash on it. Stay busy. Oh, yeah, one of the cats is in here.
a second. All the Dark Angels as well, man. Let's see. I might be painting a Samael. Gotta figure out whether or not Spec wants to keep any of the uh, Ravenwing characters. Or uh, he's the only Ravenwing character, but any of the Ravenwing is part of his list for Adepticon. So I told him if he did, then uh, if he wanted to bring Samael, I'd paint it on stream so we could have a nice, a nice Sammy model. Much better. Figure out how I want to do this face. It's a, it's a pretty good reason there, entire Mac. I do not fault you. There are definitely times where I have gotten stuff commissioned purely for the fact that I just don't want to paint it, <laughs> but it needs to get painted. dry.
set him aside. He can dry up. Wait for tomorrow. Space cabs, what's up? different because Games Workshop also sells Nolan Oil, but Nolan Oil Gloss is different. It has a kind of soapy detergent element to it that lets it dry shiny and lowers its surface tension so it doesn't want to settle on any flat surfaces. going on there like super clean it only wants to only wants to sit in the details doesn't want to settle on any of the uh, flat areas and if you're using wash like this see what I'm doing right here like you can always just kind of grab it up with your brush and kind of wick it away start settling and dirtying anything up use the spit eraser as well Got the Eclipse. Very nice. went on there extra super duper clean brought all of our details back out so we're just gonna be doing that all over this guy and if we notice anywhere where the wash is kind of sticking on some flat surface and dirtying it up too much then we can just wick it away or wipe it off with our finger tips are super bright still or on this shield we don't want too much wash on there just enough to bring that eagle detail back out
Okay, looking nice. Looking clean. Set that up right there. Looking good. All those details popping out. And the putting the wash on there really does help the effect kind of show through. Because it kind of cuts back into the detail a little bit and um, helps tie everything together. Especially on these shoulder guards, it's going to help a lot. Cut all that detail back in. it now let him dry up before we do anything else in the model we need to let the, all that wash dry completely and then put a matte coat back over it so we can keep on painting so I think what else we can do is put a base coat on this dude's flesh tone let's shake this color up real good and see what it's like Yeah, it's a pretty good base tone. Some of this dwarf flesh from the Leho game color out. So I just got this dwarf, dwarf skin. Dwarf skin. That's what it's called. Oh, the, uh, the rattle can ones? Um, testers, model masters the uh the rattle can or um tamaya are the two rattle cans that i would uh, recommend too thin. Go ahead and get some water and kind of rinse that off. That's way too thin. Try this again. Apparently, I don't need to thin this as much as model color.
try. Starting up his custodies. Ah, uh, kind of, sort of. I mean, this guy is going to be a top D giveaway. Um, but I am going to be having a force of custodies jet bikes. But I have to wait until next week to get those, obviously. That's what I'm going to be running at Adepticon. So after the stream, I'm going to be playing some Dark Souls 3, so if anybody else is uh, has Dark Souls 3 on the computer and wants to, you know, have some jolly cooperation, should uh, hit me up in the Discord and we'll figure out how to make it happen. Maybe if you uh, want to start, you need a helpful Sumbro to come help you out, then I can join your world, help you get you through some stuff. Have an Adepticon set of dice because I know they're gonna have like a t shirt and some paintbrushes, but do they have a set of thing this year? Sorry about that, Ugly. Yeah. Well, welcome, anyways. You've been with the stream long enough to already know what I already know how to do this, the airbrush, so you didn't really miss anything you haven't already seen before. Not being able to do anything because of no compressor, it sucks. The uh, armature? Yeah, I saw pictures of it. Looks cool. Yep. People have been doing some speculation on how big it is. I'm putting money that it's going to fit on a 70 to 80 millimeter base. And it's going to be a little bit taller than a Redemptor Dreadnought. Because if what I'm hoping to get out of it is that they it's at a price point of like between 70 to 90 dollars and uh, that it fits on like a 70 mil base maybe even an 80 mil base um, because doing nights doing normal nights is a little cost prohibitive and um, they're so goddamn big Yeah, 
I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit taller because because of its build, I think it's going to be a little taller than a Redemptor, but um, I think it's going to fit on the same base size. At least that's what I'm hoping. That's my that's my estimate. But it's cool. It's looking cool. It's kind of hoping for more out of the. Uh, Necron stuff. I think just giving them a character is a little lame. With so much of their line needs an update. Like hell, their warriors need an update bad. Warriors look so stupid. If only just reposes. Like they just like keep the same, the same look, but just give them a new pose. Because like this, the squat poopy, the taking I'm taking a poop looking stance that all of them have is just so dumb. They need they need something better and necron warriors should be if like if they're going to be on 28 mil bases they need to stand up straighter so that they fit on the bases better because right now with those like kind of squatting down poses like their feet always go off of the base and shit it just looks terrible oh cool man yeah make sure to show me when you're done with that redemptor i want to see it Yeah, it's pretty cool. The uh, the easy to build one seemed like it had a whole lot of open space on it, which was nice. That piece was dry. Anything moving around? Lost wash is always tricky to figure out if it's actually dry or not because it dries shiny. So you gotta use some air or something to figure out if it's moving. Let's 
try. So let's mat coat this dude. Thinner. Where is the mat varnish? I know that can't be the only one because I have two up here. There it is. Um, usually when I clean between colors, I like to use a uh, paint solvent. So I'll use like Tamaya paint thinner or Tamaya airbrush cleaner, which is a paint solvent to eat it, eat all that stuff up out of there. Um, after I've already like rinsed it out with water a few times. And then uh, overnight I just have a cup uh, about halfway full of simple green that I just let it sit in. And that'll clean it. That'll clean it like hella good. Oh, I get you an airbrush next month. Cool. Yeah, you definitely don't want to like so. If, so, um, like, if you're gonna switch colors and you've still got like a bunch of uh, paint in the pot, you definitely do not want to put that solvent in there because it'll turn 
all that paint into like a goopy mess. But you want to, you have to like rinse it out, and you only want to use the paint solvent to get any of like the dried paint stuff off of the sides and down from the bottom. But don't ever try to like thin your paint or uh, rinse it out with that paint solvent because it'll cause a, like a chemical reaction and it'll start to eat away at the the molecules. It turns it into this like nasty goop shit. You definitely don't want to have to deal with. Which is why I only use it to clean stuff out between colors. So I'm doing with this face just because I want this to go a little quick and look nice. So just got our dwarf skin base coat. We just took some BC brown to hit underneath it like that. So now all the underneaths of everything is shadowed. And now I'm just going to take a slightly brighter color um, and do like kind of a top down spray with it. stuff built in before we put a wash on it and then we'll do like another little airbrush highlight after the wash is dry to make the skin look nice and realistic. Get some. I know it's super wet, but we got some shadows built in now before we put a wash on there. highlights on our lion. 
Uh, this was based in Celestra. Then we're going to go up to Ulthwan Gray. Down for highlights on there. up to ivory so it'll be more of a organic white uh the entire mech yes yes i am since we're not using metallic paint uh composition wise making like a tan lion um doesn't really work very good iridescent on screen so we've got some natural shadows in there so then we throw a wash on it um, all of that will be ready to go might end up doing just like kind of a last second um, dry brush with the ivory paint after the wash is dry just to help all those little individual um, bits of fur like stick out on the model and look clean Hope it looked more organic. So it's time to seven twenty two. All right. So before we put the airbrush away for good today, I do want to go ahead and get some color on this base. So let's go ahead and prime that. Set this stuff aside. So that's ready for washes. Super watery. Why are you so watery? And we'll get this prime that I'm thinking of doing kind of a sleet, like a blue blue-gray slate. Put stones with a little bit of uh, kind of organic yellow for the, the other stuff. So for this like broken clock it's embedded in the ground we'll do like some yellow ochre.
bit more. I still see some resin poking through. Yeah, it's a really cool base from uh, Cyborg. Cyborg monstrous miniatures. He makes really cool bases, especially if you're doing like a single like hero character or something. I really like him because there's a really nice vertical element to all of his bases. Because he doesn't really make bases for like building an entire army. He makes like kind of display style bases, which is nice when you have uh, when you're painting like a character or something. So we'll rinse this out, then we'll go up to one of our more gray colors. to somber gray somber gray from Yeah, it would be neat. It'd be cool. Go up to uh, dark pale blue from model coloring for our accent highlight. Oh, 
you didn't like Hell's Reach. That one was fairly forgettable for me. Although the uh, the thing that guy is doing, where he's like CG animating it, is like really dope. Honestly, I, like the only books that I've read from him that I really enjoyed was the um, the Night Lords books that he wrote. Everything else, I could take it or leave it. Let's get out some brown for our dirt. Let's get the charred brown. For the game air. Yeah, those books are definitely super long. But um, out of everything that I've read where um, like Trader Marines are some of the main characters in the book, um, that one is by far my favorite.
Office UK, what's up, man? How's it going? Last thing that I need to do with the airbrush is these skulls. My skeleton bone. Or bone white. Bone white will do it. Going good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Working on this custodian man. Get some basic colors on his face. Before we throw a wash on it. that we are done with the airbrush so I'm rinse it out feel good get that bad boy in simple green let our compressor go to sleep for tonight and we'll take our base and let it sit over on the side Go ahead and put a wash on this uh, lion pelt. And a wash on the face, and then spend the rest of our time getting other colors blocked in on the main body. the top of that tiger that uh, I keep wanting to say tiger I know it's a lion uh, top of that lion head is nice and clean Lick some of this away so we still got our details shaded but I just wanted the top to be nice and clean let's bring out our face Flesh shade out. Drop that on there. Some of our to reach a violet. Drop that on there. 
fill it out with a little bit of water. And a shade on the space. Just about like that. And I'm not going to touch it because I like where it is. Let's suck that out of there. Pretty darn perfect for a face wash. And let it sit. Okay, let's do some reorganization here. Everything's all topsy turvy right now. So, I think the first thing we're going to need to do is our darkest blue and some flat black. And then maybe a dark brown. Do I have a super dark brown? I've got charred brown, but that's really thin. I need like a model color. I don't think I have a model color that's that dark. Maybe I can just mix some flat brown with black. flat black out, the model color, we're going to hit all those joints and stuff that we want to be mechanical. Are you 5S? Thanks for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, yes, it does have a gun in it. It is a gun axe. All the custodian weapons have firearms inside of them, even the swords. What is this thing called? Like a warden axe or some such, some kind of something axe. But it's like uh, characters and um, the uh, the wardens, the custodian warden unit, can replace their guardian spears with the, this axe.
Castellanax, that's it, thank you. Yeah, it's a whole new thing. Uh, the uh, Terminators can also take them. Pretty sweet. Something like uh, plus three strength, minus two AP, D3 damage. JWW604. Thanks for that follow. Let's see what you did there with that name. Welcome to the stream. Also, another cool thing about this technique is that when you start blocking in all your other colors, all the stuff that's going to be not gold is going to get blocked in, and all that overspray from doing all this gold stuff is going to get covered up, and it's going to cut in the non-metallic look with each item that you... Uh, that you paint in and it's going to divide all those things and have nice color separation so it ends up making the look like much cleaner which is really cool like you can already start to see it with the axe like just cutting in all those extra details really makes the non-metallic gold stuff like pop out of there um and then like when we come back and do the uh like the glove and these handles in like a uh, like a black red It'll, it'll cut in all the detail on the, uh, the handle there, making it look even nicer. Right now I'm just going and putting like a really thin coat of this model color black on everything that's gonna end up being like steel colored or rubber, just to uh, mark it out. Because we're going to have to do, like, so for, like, this little thing here and this magazine and the barrel and the handle trigger thing, we're going to have to do some uh, steel non-metallic metal workup. But luckily, all those parts are super small, so it'll be easy. And then we'll do, like, an airbrush power, uh, power weapon effect on the axe handle in the later stages. But starting to cut in all those details looking pretty good Try to get all up in this little tiny joint. Luckily, this glove is going to be brown, so I can totally get paint on it. I just do not want to get any black paint on. Just 
stuff that we spent all that time airbrushing. There we go. Nice. So you can see on the arms there that where those areas have now been covered up where the overspray was, it separates those colors out. So the effect is uh, a lot nicer. God damn it, Spec Ops. Why can't you be here? Ban people for me. Except for Steve. You know what's funny? Because, like, usually when people try to come in and troll, I'll let them kind of, like, say some shit just to see if they're any good at it. But when people just do lazy shit, like, post links to, like, pictures and stuff, I'm just like, come on, man, you're not even trying. At least give some effort if you troll. Just, if you're not giving effort, then you're just wasting everybody's time. Oh, uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're right, ugly. They're probably a bot. Um, let's see. Matt Aarons, what's up, man? Um, yeah, this was uh, Beastie Brown over black. Uh, then I was going to use Flash Gets Yellow, but I got this new paint from, that I ordered from uh, Slow Fuse called uh, Golden Yellow, which was, like, really pretty. So we went with that instead of Flash Gets. Um... And then uh, just little like spot highlights with ivory. And then a gloss coat, gloss wash, you saw the rest. And then when we get to the edge highlight phase, we're gonna come in with some pure white. And I got some of that nice hobo white from, uh, from Slow Fuse. Um, and then we'll just like really lock in the shine by just putting little, little, little edge highlights and little dots of pure white on the uh, most on the, the peaks and points of, uh, of stuff to really lock in the kind of shiny effect. I 
For right now, we're just going in and uh, base coating everything that's going to end up being either rubber or steel metallic. And then we're going to try to base coat his uh, robes, which we're doing in a really nice dark navy blue to bright electric blue highlights. I could try something different with the blues, but I mean, they just look so good that I don't think I'm ever gonna change the way that I do blues, unless it has to be like a totally different shade of blue. You know what's ironic is that um, getting trolled is partially a mark of success. Because why would they waste their time going into a stream where nobody's watching? So I guess, I guess I've really made it guys, I'm getting trolled on the reg. Yeah, Jason and I's uh, like kind of philosophy on on painting and uh, kind of like our styles are very different. But um, he is a friend, and I like if I need a paint, I'll usually check his stuff first. And he does have some really nice products, and I've been wanting to try out the hobo white. That everybody's ranting and raving about, so I went ahead and got some. Man, that face looks so good. I mean, it still needs some highlights, but oof, looks good. I'm really proud of that face. Yeah, like initially when I uh, when I put this color on the palette, um, it looked darker than Flash Gets. But then I just I had to like mix it up a little bit more, and then when I put it on the palette, it's like about the same brightness as Flash gets. It's just more like it's richer, it's more vibrant. It's not as um, like translucent yellow as Flash gets is, so I kind of like it. Okay, so we got that stuff in there. Uh, looks like we're just about out of time. So I'll go ahead and I'll base coat like a little bit of the blue just so y'all can see which blue is what it's going to look like. Because I mean like we did get a huge amount of work done on this model today. But that's that's the cool thing about this um, non-metallic gold recipe is you can is you can get that cool non-metallic gold look in way less time than it would take to hand paint it all which is like it's what i'm always looking for because screw hand painting all that shit it takes forever ain't got time for that and careful around these uh, armor plates.
I might actually need to do two coats of this because it looks like the under the undercoating of all the uh, yellow and white is really brightened in this blue up and I need it to be I need it to be way darker for the base color. I might even mix it with some black when I do the second coat. Cause I mean like I know on the box that he's he's got the red they have the red accents and the, the you know the royal blood red cloth and all that but I mean I just think personally I just prefer blue and gold more than I do red and gold I'm not the biggest fan of red and gold as a color scheme so I'm doing I'm doing this guy with blue and we're doing a uh, if you weren't here at the beginning of the stream when we paint his cape gonna be doing a uh, two-sided cape so the outside is gonna be uh, this blue workup and then the inside is gonna be white so that'll look really striking and it'll help go with the, uh, the white lion pelt that he's got Sure to hold this just so. So do not want to get this blue on there. And like now that now that this cloth is like cutting in next to the big piece of armor he's got between his legs, you can really see like non-metallic gold workup in action because all that overspray around it is gone so it's giving it it's giving it contrast and it's making all the edges like nice and clean and hard If I get any blue paint on that key, I can always put black back over it. Oh, I should have painted those little hoses on his feet. Oh. I have to go back and paint up that key again anyways, so let's just do that right now.
yeah, it's a nice blue. This is uh, it's the dark Prussian blue that I uh, that I use a lot. By far, my favorite blue paint of any that I've ever used. Looks like it needs a little bit more. I can see some. I can see some stuff poking out, like right here. Kind of right here. Crisis averted. I think that's what we're stopped for tonight. For the real bitch, it's going to be airbrushing that highlight on there. Especially this spot. I may not even be able to airbrush that spot. I might have to do this spot by hand. Pretty sure I can just like throw some mask, and, like hit this knee and this bit down here. And we'll be fine, but going to get the picture of what the colors are going to be looking like and kind of how that non-metallic gold is is looking after some color separation the red dread let me check it out Are you doing uh, what? Uh, what chapter are you doing? Are you doing Imperial Fists or are you doing like Size of the Emperor or something? That black and yellow. Yeah, never. Don't 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 drink and paint. Never never drink and paint, ever. Learned that the hard way. I was drinking. Uh, this is like years ago, but I was like having some uh some like rum and coke and painting at home and i was like man this looks awesome and then the next day i pull it out of the case at the shop and i was like this looks like a fucking kindergartner did it like oh god oh lord wedge posted something too Yeah, looking mean. I like it. If I were you, if you want to keep using that skin color, I would change the uh, the wash tone. Are you are you using uh, Agrax or are you using Reichland? Because I, I would I would use Reichland to bring some like uh, some like red like skin tone back into that. But otherwise, it's looking good. There you go. Spec at the Uber Dread. Like it. Yeah, so we got a lot of work done. The face, about 50% finished. Got our pelt about 50% finished. I'm going to have to clean that up because that dried that way. But I can fix that claw. That's no big deal. Um, but looking good. Fur on the white line is looking good. Um, got all of our non-metallic stuff. About 90% finished. All it needs is some edge highlighting. So tomorrow when we come back, we'll be working on this dude again. I'll try to do some work in between streams and get... Um, the majority of our base colors blocked in so on our cape we'll get our our basic blue uh based in on the cape and our uh light gray for the interior going up to white 
get the uh, leather and all that stuff base colored. I'll get these feathers and shit base colored so that um, tomorrow we can just go in and do some highlighting and some uh, edge highlighting and get this dude wrapped up tomorrow, ready to go for next Saturday. But yep, that arm is looking sweet. I like it. The axe is looking tasty. Gonna need to do power effect on that blade before he's done but I like where it's at now and then for this guy I think what we're gonna do is just get some kind of uh, probably like a, a white um, eagle on there we'll have to like go in and hand paint all that nice like, the cool thing is that it's sculpted in there so I don't have to freehand it but I mean it's pretty close to freehanding so I'm gonna have to dick with that next time as well our base most of the way done gotta come in and uh, get a base coat on this chain because that's gonna have to be non-metallic metal uh, Get a base coat on all these little like leaves these little fern plants that are over there and throw a wash on this Highlight that up, but most of the base colors are, uh, are on there already. So it's looking good So yeah, excited it's going well so far just gotta keep it All that stuff going and we come back tomorrow Oh, the light's reflecting? That makes sense. All right, well then, lay my last. Keep doing what you're doing then. All right, uh, oh no, come here window. Okay, let's find somebody to host. Alright, so um, we'll be back tomorrow, normal time, uh, normal place. Gonna be working on this custody man again, and uh, if we get him uh, wrapped up early, um, then I'll try to do some more work on um, the orc captain, Captain Badruck, that we've been doing, because he's like real, he's like even closer to being finished. So, um,. What I'll do between streams is I'll get a base for him uh, painted up so that all we have to do is like finish out our highlights and mount them on the base and he'll be done um, and uh, do some more work on this guy because like, if we don't get the custodian finished tomorrow it's no big deal it doesn't have to be done until next Saturday uh, when it goes up for top donator giveaway so um, if we need to come back on like Wednesday and finish him I'm totally cool with that or uh, finish him tomorrow and then finish Captain Badruck on Wednesday and uh, start a new project. Totally cool with that as well. Um, but yeah, so after Captain Badruck, um, I'm probably going to do like one custody jet bike next week. I'm not going to start all of them. I'll just do one for the stream and then you probably won't see it again until uh, like Adepticon crunch time. Um, because I do want to get to some of our other projects because we've got like these cool samurai and I want to I want to start one of those and we've got the infinity project that we've been kind of pushing back and pushing back and pushing back and that needs to get started so I want to get that started uh, in the month of February um, other than that uh, I think we're just about ready to get out of here uh, after the stream I'm gonna be online doing some Dark Souls 3 on Steam. Uh, so if anybody wants to join me, just send me a message in uh, Discord chat and we can go have some adventures together in Dark Souls 3. Um, and I think with that, we're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna throw a host over to Reiner72, see what he's up to. And uh, like normal, wait for that host to go through, then jump over to his channel, tell him I sent you, hit him with those Jack Clubs emotes, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.